What's up, folks? What is good? What is good? Let me get that screen pulled up. Oh, we're moving, moving. Nice. Should be saying, should be good. FOMC days, we'll probably just chill here to at least power hour. I'd only try to look before that. Figures we get on beforehand though and see what's taking place. Obviously you see the Seek and Destroy is just continuing. FOMC is pretty whip -y, so at this point, just running stops. Preferably, I was hoping that these lows stayed intact right here. Right, the lows that we just ran. I was looking at this level, hoping that we had ran this high first. And then during power hour, I was going to target that. Since we've ran that already, though, and now we have buy side sitting here. Let me clear all these. Just tape reading this one. So we have all these highs. See if we want to run that and then break again. We'll have to see, we'll have to see. Not much to work with as of now. Morning gave some decent price action, honestly. Let's see, do we run that low? All cleared. Honestly, this right here, we could test that out. The breaker. Before we would actually do it, but it's just paper, I think, so we'll be alright. Let's see. Ideally, a fair value gap. Yeah, because prices moved a lot, so it's going to be a large stop. But say we actually did want to come back up into this buy side and run this, so continue to seek and destroy. Buy side is the liquidity that would be now the target since we cleared all the sell side. Low, high, lower, low, broken. Up close candle potentially. I want to see if there's a fair value gap that gets left. There is. I'll try a little paper trade on this. Paper in because it's before my actual time window. But still want to follow price. Just going to see what FOMC I want to offer here. We go under that breaker. We need to break either this low or this high aggressively to start kind of looking for trades in that direction. As of now, we're just within this range. So caught that one. 34, 32, 34. Wait, what? This short. Oh, just a quick. Oh, I see. Yeah, because you only have to do the baby trades. You got that super trade. Oh, 34 to 24. Hell yeah. All right, so we're just using this fair value gap. Seeing if that'll hold us here. Stop on top because we only got a three o'clock. Boop. Fair value gap inside breaker block. <laughs> Darling, don't you wait for me. Mm -hmm. 
Crazy thing is, this is already five handles right there. So, like, we could even partial out at this high. But we obviously have higher targets. FOMC creates such... Not, I guess, aggressive, but... The ranges are so large. Easy to capture five handles during FOMC days, honestly. Hmm. Two minute, one minute. I almost want to build more of the position. We'll add one there. Ideally, we get out of this range before. Nah, I don't think we will, though. If we're stuck in this range during power hour, maybe a more lackluster. Hmm. See, I don't like closing under volume and balances like that at all. A little rock. But yeah, closing under that always got me wary. This right here is going to be the biggest issue for us. Well, this fair value gap may act as a wall. We need to get through it like that. You see how quick we reject from that hell? We should have partial at five handles if we're being completely honest. But now nah, we pull. Hesitation is okay. Explosion through is preferred. Right, best case scenario, we disregard the fair value gap. We go right through that hell. What's so at that point? We'll partial at the high. That's a good idea. So we'll close one right at the high of the fair value gap. Let's put a limit here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, sir, good shit. Hmm, see, that's clean. Now we just follow structure at this point, which allows us to go BE. I mean, it's not even power hour yet. We might run. Nah, we'll stay at this high. Final TP, yeah, we'll stay that high. Let's see. I wonder what else we got, though. For very gap. Hmm, we got a swing high right here too, actually. We're gonna go like this. There's a swing high from the 25th. We're gonna use. So I've got us up here. Breaker held nicely. Really just using the fair value gap though. Volume and balance played out. Inversion. <clears throat> ICT Suns model. What's that? All I know is that it's like almost negative. Oh, he's got like a five handle stop, five handle TP. I don't know what he'd be looking for though.
if we're able to take off a partial because <clears throat> i kind of want to re-add it this fair value gap like if we were to get back into this fair value gap right here We may not even do that though. This level here, this green line is one standard deviation, right? Of the opening today. So I do want to take one off right there ideally we could add one back now nah, we'll just hold fully if we get a chance we'll uh might well, as I often say if we get we'll fully close if our intended target here and then if we get more price action that allows us to continue we'll do that cameron's model yeah i know who he is i'm so i don't know what the actual model is <clears throat> i'm guessing it's some pattern of some sort or sweep on liquidity with some youtube model i can see that Boom. So there goes that buy side. That's a beautiful trade there. From the 15, right? The high we're using there is from the 25th of October. Now I was debating leaving one on for the high of this fair value gap. <clears throat> but if we're kind of going to continue seeking destroy, we may just reverse. Now if we're going to, oh, we're pumping though. So that would have played out, but oh well. We'll contend with that. 22, 29 to what? 49, 20 handles. <clears throat> Empower hour is just starting now. Let's see what we get then. We didn't even get this might be a measuring interesting. Let's try again. That's a huge stop though, that's the issue. We'll go right on the old high. At least get a one to two. I mean, ideally, let's say we expand. One and a half standard deviation. We'll try that. How come I can't hear? Uh, I don't know, brother. <clears throat> Can other people hear? That's the better question. Okay, okay. Yeah, I don't know. Something ain't right. Ooh, is that a volume bounce? We should have added right there. Should we be aggressive with one here? Uh -huh. Hmm. 
Um, FOMC got you with it. They don't want you listening. Well, we would have had to close that anyway. <clears throat> we'll still wait for this because we just made a two minute fair value gap actually. So a retracement would be nice. That's actually a two minute volume imbalance. So. Mm. Now nah, we'll wait for the retracement. No need to chase it. Oof. Issue is we might just hold that because we've hit the two minute now. Notice how that candle body's holding the 15 though. So all these things are intertwined. Lower time frame using the higher time frame. Ideally, we get one more run below that. I'll go actually just right under that. But we may hold from here. Because we even did tap the one minute as well. There we go. Audio achieved. Yeah, it's a fire level. That'd be ideal consequent cut. Oh, the yawn. She. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Candles are holding that nicely though, but we'd have to wait for the 15. Look, we still got seven minutes. Technically, we always kind of like to wait for the actual candle to close. So the smaller time frames may use it and take us there quickly. We may get something where we kind of just bounce a little bit on it though. So waste some time. We'll try to get one more run into this low. Yeah, see the beautiful thing about FOMC, bro. Like you said, from there, you didn't even need to get this high. Easy five. Good shit. Large ranges can be sketched, but if you know what you're looking for, you get rewarded quickly. Mm. 
I'm holding that nice. Content, exactly. Hell yeah. <clears throat> Content with enough, huh? We're definitely going to run these highs out. It's just a matter of do we give a run lower? Right, we might just miss it. That's fine. Even if we ran these highs quick, I'll probably still hold this. Let's see, to get bearish, I mean, we'd have to get underneath probably this fair value gap heat weight. Let me see. Mmm, 5, 15. Yeah, this five minute. Closing a body underneath this five minute fair value gap. Right here. Right, getting back underneath the old high. But that would even still be only into this fair value gap. We could hold from there. We did the manipulation or the consolidation, right? We manipulate lower into the lows. We attack through the highs. And now we expand. Mmm, we're gone, we're gone, we're gone. Yeah, I'm not, yeah, we'd have to get, <clears throat> break a lot of PD arrays for me to go bearish. Myself and my wife sit at different desks. I think so. Is there a way that she can watch at the same time? What invite, I guess? Oh, like you're on different screens. I see what you mean. What invite link, though, you're getting kicked out of? Look, what we could try, say this volume imbalance gets left open. We could take that. Because this price doesn't want to return into the lower, I mean, it did really, institutional order flow entry right there. Close it in, though. We'll try this here. One minute fair value gap. We're gonna use the down close candle though. Okay, reaching into the down close candle. Nice. Stop is based on a two minute swing point. And we just keep it under the carpet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm.
So honestly, getting underneath our entry swing low, like if we were to clear this wick, good chance we actually get ran out. Because if we we're going to create that wick in reverse and then take that wick out, I think we are going to continue to run that. We'll see if we can't hold it though. When it stops, stays in place. Mm As soon as this candle closes, we'll use that swing low as our stop, right? Because at this point, if we clear that low, we're going to be stopped out regardless. Like I said, closing below this low, not ideal at all. But right now, we're just probably hitting consequent encroachment of that wick. If we can get back above it and close above it. I'd feel good looking for this high again, seeing price run. Yeah, not like that though. We wick into that, close underneath. <clears throat> we gotta get above it. Gotta get above it. I don't know what you got, but let's go. I was like, we'll close one at break even. Basically cut and risk. Because we're still holding that Wix consequent encroachment, right? I don't really like that. So expansion, right, we're now in that consolidation phase, hoping to capitalize on another expansion. If we start breaking down now, though, we may look for that slight reversal or retracement into that range. Oops, I wanted to close one. Right, if we break highs or whatever, I'll just look to add it back. But with how we're moving in here, just going to cut some risk. 
slight profit even. One thing that's interesting is that the 15 didn't close above, right? So although we're using this as an inversion right now, if I show you the actual 15 minute chart, notice we didn't close above it. We did, however, create a volume imbalance. So now we need to wait another 10 minutes to see if this can remain open, which if it does, I still like the idea of adding to another, right? Deviation one and a half, clearing out a high. But notice where the, all right, this is the 15 minute, oops, volume imbalance. With where our stop is, honestly, I could see us getting, like, say we ran this low and still found support here. I still would be looking for higher prices. So I don't want to necessarily abandon the idea right away, even if you're off sides. Classic man, power hour be methodical. We just chilling. That's crazy. Too slow. Mm, that's real crazy. Like, really, we could have closed there at five handles, which we probably should have, huh? I just want to see if you reach for that high. But with that huge wick, we're actually going to. Let's see how this volume imbalance closes. We'll go there. Volume imbalance.
there's a high right here from the 25th, same day that we used for the first trade. We're going to go there. That's about 10 handles. We'll be fine with that. Above this wick, break even. With the volume imbalance, yeah, break even for sure. Yeah, this stuff here. I took this one for real. That was just clean. Oh, the disrespect. Five handle swing, just like that. Volume and balance needs to hold us, or we're getting stopped. Boom, fell just short. What did we get? 42.63 and a half. We were 42.64. Let's see, go back into the two, back into the five. I'm not really giving up on that idea, honestly. Let's see what we could have. We have this. Mm, that's interesting there. I like that for a quick return into just that 15 minute volume imbalance, right? Mm, yeah, it fell just short. Right, we were aiming for this high here. It looks like we hit this high here. Nope, fell short of that as well. Okay, okay. So yeah, still really waiting for that 15, right? Two minutes. If we can close this 15 minute above the 15 minute fair value gap, we'll be above the volume imbalance. We can get a true setup to form then. And in that last half hour of the day, maybe get a run back up into buy side. I still like that high. I like the high. See what we do here. 
potential inversion. We can get above that. Let's say that we do want a... How far is that? Mm, kind of far away though. Say right, we want the 15 to close here. So one minute till it does. Let's kind of run through a scenario. Well, obviously it looks like we'll close above this fair value gap. So once this closes, we'll confirm this as a potential 15 minute inversion, which at that point, if we wanted to get into it, we would actually try to use this premium that we just formed in my mind. Right, where if we got above this, so we've just closed on the 15 now. So if we did want to revisit this fair value gap, I feel as this high, this high here should stay intact. But if we can get above this fair value gap, we may just run straight for that high. If we can get somewhere we run out lows and then we get a quick some type of right discount to form. I would like that for actually getting long. Okay, notice that. So we use that perfectly. We do have equal lows here, but right, as we know, sometimes lows get left in place. Let's see, 3.30. We'll probably just run for this, honestly. If we are going to run higher, that should stay open. Maybe wake into one of these discounts quickly. Either of these would be fine. But ideally, the actual volume imbalance itself should remain open. Up close candle through the equal highs. Cool. It's just what you'd want to see right there. Nice. <laughs> oh, shit. Can't help but laugh sometimes. Like, what? Come on, fellas. 
absolute crazy reaction off that level. That's hilarious. And then where to go though? Right back into price is just so pretty. Right. Yeah, so now that we've ran this high, now we could start breaking through all this. Right now, I still like these lows, these original lows here. But we're holding all the discounts in here, honestly. Need to get through them. Right, as we often speak about when we delivering to a target, we often like to see discounts get left. But once we hit targets, those unfilled discounts can still be traded into and offer support now. Right, that's why I'm saying we need to see price actually break through these because wicking into them, right, that could mean really anything. We could continue to just pump right through this high again into the actual deviation point of that daily range. And let's see. Yeah, the high. Of it. So the reason I have this 15 minute high in particular, right, not just a random high, is there's actually this unfilled fair value gap here. Right, so we never got into its consequent encroachment, and this swing point is sitting just underneath. So that's the reason that I'm using this high in particular. So if I was to drag out the actual remainder of that fair value gap, right, we can see that we once again still fell short of that consequent encroachment. So if price is trying to get up into that, we may find support here at these fair value gaps. With how we're delivering, it'd be tough for me to really confirm bearishness, right? If we can get underneath this one, this initial fair value gap, especially seeing how many times we're using it as support, we may have the opportunity of using that. It's just that, right, we have this fair value gap here, this potential inversion. So we still have other discounts price may uh, bounce from, which just makes us higher risk if we're trying to short it. But still, right, that same fair value gap just holding us. Just holding, just holding, just holding. Why are you making it so complicated? Two minute volume imbalance, bearish. One minute as well. This may be the candle to get through this fair value gap. Because of that volume imbalance. Maybe giving us a little indication. If we negate that though, I mean, this thing is holding price dead in its tracks. The actual level. So notice, right, a little different than the rest of these, wicks closing on its low, but we immediately are met with a bullish volume imbalance.
I say we get through this. I feel as if we would, depending on what this volume and balance does. But as we were saying, starting with that volume and balance here may be the indication we're going to start trying to get underneath. Ideally, we go through both at the same time, right? If we had one candle that punched right through both of these. Okay. There we go. So now, right, that's what we would want to see for lower prices. One, two, three drives. We need to close below, right? Because as I'm saying, we can't just wick. If we keep wicking here, we could wick, continue to wick, reverse. We need to actually close under the discounts. But I'm looking at this little three drives. Second drive is actually equal lows, right? So that'd be nice to get into. So we'll try a little short here, actually. Back into the 15 minute volume imbalance after running into the buy side liquidity. Potentially. We're looking for this to be an inversion now. Oh. So I'll see if we are completely, oh, completely the wrong on this one. <laughs> Romantic yo. Mm. Close one. Don't like the volume imbalance. And closing above this at the same time. So we'll just cut risk. Right, leave one on for the original position. See if we can't negate this. We'd have to see this create that volume imbalance where there's no upwards movement. Best case scenario. Right. 
But if we just tap this, we may tap and run. I'm also looking at a two minute and we had created a two minute bearish volume balance. It completely closed in, which I didn't like to see. We're revisiting it now. Ideally, we get underneath. At this point, price is moving ugly. What we'll do, we'll go stop above. These are equal highs. At this point, I only care though. Right, with how much price is moving in here. And we'll add that one back. So since we have a tighter stop, basically the same stop loss. Same risk. Actually, a little bit less than our original entry. But if we get stopped, that'll kind of be the end of power hour for us. We'll hang out and see. 350 kind of gives us some volatility. So maybe 350 gives us a little quick run into liquidity. Not favorable. Stop loss in danger. We letting this one rock though. <laughs> yeah the way we're using that right if we're just kind of going off price itself i think we do get up in there at least these highs which means our stop will get tagged for sure that's all right though interesting got a chance Yeah, see, power hour would be boring, though. Even when we move to targets, it's so slow. That's why I like it, though. Chill. If this was to close in, I would close one of these positions here. For the sake of just letting it rock, though. Right, we'll leave it. But how I would do is I would definitely close, especially because we open with an opposing volume imbalance. Right, so we negate the bearish, we keep holding this fair value gap, and then we open with a bullish. I would just close one, leave stop here. Right, still give it a chance to continue to run if it wants to play. But it's showing more signs of running these highs than wanting to return into this low. Right, unless we can get a quick aggressive move, and that's kind of what we're waiting for here at 350. But we may get stopped out before 350. See if we get spared. Hmm. Still holding that. Look at that damn thing, brother. All right, this next two minutes should tell us whether or not we're wrong or right. We had to guess. Probability is 
stop loss is going to get ran through. Best case scenario. We'll partial out. Wait. 54. All right. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Just do some. Move somewhere. <sighs> but because we keep holding this like that, I feel like we're about to like spring it up, loading up to just straight through that. Get down. Equal highs, equal lows. Which goes first? Love it. That might have been the Judas swing, though. Here comes the stop loss. What we're going to do. Cut and risk, cut and risk. In profit. Want to see price accelerate into five handles. All right, since we're getting so late in the day, we kind of adjust the uh, targets. We go for low hanging fruit. We go above that. We should have took a partial there at that low. So I'm going to go break even. Nice. Risk-free trade. Just need five handles. I mean, I really still do want these equal lows, if we're being honest. Right here. So we're going to do that. We're going to be greedy with it. See if we can actually clear the lows. But if we get stopped in uh, at break even, that's cool. Let me go like this. Cover cost. Best case scenario, right? We'd want to see an institutional order flow entry here. So we'd want to see price just barely return into this fair value gap and run for sell side, not give a deep retracement. If we get a deep retracement, we get stopped. We have a better chance of consolidating into the close. Whereas if we're really reaching for something and we're creating a premium like this, it should be used quickly, right? So I would want to see this down close candle overtake this candle's low, accelerate into sell side. Right, I don't like when we kind of create swing lows and then we play inside the fair value gap. Just more likely to hesitate, especially because we've already cleared sell side in a way. Right, so that may all price may be reaching for. We're just trying to be ambitious and get the actual equal lows here. Boom, back up. So we get stopped in profit. That's fine with me after securing a partial. Good chance we still get in there. Let's see. Because I wanted this consequent encroachment to hold, which is why I was fine putting my stop where it was. Because if we're going to kind of negate this February gaps consequent encroachment, as we've been saying, just more likely to consolidate. But yeah, we'll go ahead and wrap up with that, everybody. So not a bad power hour, right? We get two trades that move in our direction but we don't reach that final target it's gonna happen first one obviously was money right we like that catching both swing lows back to back swing low swing low clean and then uh yeah and here obviously consolidating but we see how right we can still use even though it's a small range if we know what we're looking for we can still kind of play inside that it's obviously a lot harder more boring as you see, right? A lot more just give and take. But at the end of the day, we come out all right. As for tomorrow, we're gonna run this low though. I just, after taking this out, I just got that feeling. But let's see. Economic calendar, NFP on Friday. All right, for me, I'd usually be done today, but we'll stream tomorrow.
high impact news in the morning so yeah it'll just be a normal stream 9 25 eastern we'll get on so yeah plan for that everybody we will be on 9 25 tomorrow morning just before the equities open so until then have a good night be safe and we'll talk tomorrow see you guys